Hey everyone, it's Angus here. I just thought I'd make a um, video showing you how you might be able to use parallel channels to look for entries into stocks. Um, I've just sort of stumbled across uh, lithium energy. You can see it's up roughly 227% over the last, you know, theory over the last year, but it's actually only started, you know, it's trading history around the middle of May. Um, all I've got is I've got a you know, a whole bunch of lithium stocks that I'm, you know, kind of watching from day to day on the Australian market. And, you know, just sort of, you know, I've, I've, I own some of these and, you know, this lithium energy one was just one that I sort of like the look of, um, mainly because you can see down here, it's MACD is crossing over its, um, you know, slower moving average over its, um, you know, the, the orange line here. So you can see the little blue line is about to cross the, uh, the orange line and if I make it bigger so you can see it a bit more easily so you can see there see how the blue lines crossing up through that slower moving average and so sometimes that's a good indication of a good time to buy so you can see here it's crossed through and had a nice little run um, it's crossed through here you know had a nice little run and I can show you that by going back so where it's crossed here nice little run crossed here nice little run and it's about to cross here the only sort of little bit negative side of it is that the RSI is, you know, reasonably high, like it's sitting at around 63. And, you know, as soon as it starts getting to close to that sort of 75, you know, type mark, and it tends to reverse. So there might be a little bit of room in it, but we'll just see. We'll just have a, have a bit of a quick look. So when I'm looking at this, you know, you can do things like you can draw, um, you know, horizontal lines. If you go to your, some of your tool charts, uh, that's text. I just want a line. Sometimes it takes me a while to find these things. So trend line tool, horizontal line, I use horizontal rays. And so if I click on it, say, somewhere around here, and so you can see how, you know, it sort of got up to here, it's fallen back, it's tried to get up there again, it's fallen back, it's sort of pushed up and it's got through it, it's come back, it's pushed up, it's come back, dropped down through it, it's pushed up, got stuck, pushed up, and it's broken through again. So, you know, you, you try and look at these things and you say, you know, it's an area, it's an area of support or resistance. And so theoretically, because it's pushed up through it again, you could argue that you know, at some stage it's going to come back down and touch it. But this might be a good area where you might set a stop loss, for example. So if I want to make that line a little bit thinner, so it's not quite as bold, um, I can make it thinner. Um, and I can also do things like, say, you know, call it a support area or resistance. And I might make it green because it's support, which is a good thing. And I'll put the text below it. And so I'll go, okay, Oop, and I'll change my line to green. Um, style green. And I might even go back to text and I'll put an enter above here just to make it sort of spaced out a bit better. I can make a couple of spaces there. And so that's just a really easy way of marking up your chart to say, if I'm going to, you know, enter this stock, um, this is an area where if it breaks below that, I probably want to get out. And if it does go below that, the next stop loss level might be somewhere around here, you know, so around that 0.895 mark. But, you know, what you're trying to do is maybe wait for it to get to back to a, you know, sort of a reasonable area and then, you know, look for an entry. So I'm looking at it because I like that it's just crossed over, a little bit caution because the RSI is high. And the volume's not really doing much, but let's let's um you know see if we can find a little bit more information about it. And so I'll go back to my uh, drawing tool here. I'm going to go down to parallel channel. So let's just see what this uh, looks like. And so I'm going to click at the start here. I'm going to go right up to the end here, and I'm going to let it go, drag it down a bit, and you can see here now I've got this um, parallel channel drawn. So what I'm going to do is just fiddle with it a bit. So I'm going to say Let's move it up. So see how it now touches the top, the top, the top, the top, roughly. And see how through here it's touching the bottom. Well, it's touching the sort of bottom there and the bottom there. But let's make it a little bit tighter. So let's go and say, well, more normally, it might sort of, see how it sort of brush the bottom there, brush the bottom there. This is a bit unusual where it's fallen outside that line there. So looking at this now, if I drag this down so I can shrink it a bit and move it around in my thing. In fact, I'll make it up a little bit higher and I'll go down here. And what I can do is I can say, well, maybe it's going to get back up to here. Like if you look at this and you look at this and you look at this, it's touched the top of that line each time, just in, just in terms of a trend. You know, we're always guessing. So, you know, it's just trying to put those, you know, odds slightly in your favor. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to one of these other tools, which is on this one here. 
and I'm going to say click on price range and I'm going to go basically the top of where the price is now I'm going to go sort of straight up to that line there and then I'll just drag it across a bit so you can just sort of see a bit better but so if the price at the moment gets up to that line then I can say well I've you know theoretically it's about a 13 percent gain and you could also say well if it actually you know if, it, if I bought it there and it went the wrong way and it went down then there's about you know roughly about a you know ten and a half percent loss. So you know if if it runs up and it's more likely to run up than run down, you would hope, and you know unless news or something kicks in, um, then you know there's a there's a good chance that you know you might you know be able to make a little bit of money on this stock. So let's just get rid of that one for now. And so you know it could be interesting uh, if I shrink that a bit and move that. And so if you thought well I'm happy to take the risk. Um, and I might buy it here, hoping that it'll get up to here. Um, and then you might just sort of move your stop up, you know, steadily because you're thinking that once it hits there, it's about to come back down. So you might want to sort of get out. But if you thought, well, I don't want to take that risk, I'd actually wait. I'd actually prefer to wait till it got down to, you know, one of these sort of levels here. Um, the other way you can do it is all I might do is I might cheat a little bit and I might say, well, rather than me thinking it's going to get down to here, it might not get down that far. It might not touch the line. So I still want to get notified, you know, when it does get down to that point. And I can do it one of two ways. I could either basically say um, on the RSI here, you know, when it gets to sort of around about that sort of price, you can see the RSI value is around about, I'm looking over here, the RSI value is around about, you know, 45-ish. Um, if I look around about here, uh, the RSI value there is 55. So it's just sort of below that mark. So I could say something like, you know, create an alert on the RSI. And I could say, um, sorry, right click and go create an alert on the RSI and say, if the RSI crosses, let's say the 55 mark, when it comes in a bit better value, then send me a, you know, pop up, send me an email. And so I can easily create that. And you can see where they all are underneath this clock over here. So you can see that, you know, uh, the alert that I've just added, it's somewhere in here. Uh, so see LEL, so it's got, you know, that's that's where it's got my you know alert set there. If I double click on it, I can see all about the alert. So we'll hide that again. And the other thing I can do to cheat a bit is I can also, with this parallel um, line, I might drag it up a bit. So I might say, well, what happens if it crosses through let's say there, you know, if it, if it drops down, you know, through this point here, um, then send me a message because then once it's gone down through that line, then I know it's headed towards that bottom and then I can really start to look for a, um, a buy price again. So again, I might be able to right click on this and I'll say add alert on parallel channel and I'll say if LEL, which is basically the price, if it crosses um, outside of the channel, um, then send me a um, send me an alert. You know, as soon as it happens, send me an alert so I can go create. And so that'll send me an alert when it's crossed out below that line. And the other thing I could do is if I wanted to be, you know, extra sort of fancy, I could also say, well, on this support area here, you know, right click and go add alert on horizontal ray. And if the price crosses that horizontal ray, send me an alert. So I've now got three alerts to notify me that this um, stock might be coming into a, a better value type area. So, um, you know, I so said it's just one of those interesting ways of, you know, sort of being able to look at a stock and say, well, I'd like the look of it. I'd like to wait until it comes back to sort of the bottom of this, you know, channel that it's sort of, you know, sort of bouncing around in. That's its sort of natural range. So let's wait till it gets back down to somewhere around here in this channel. Um, might be a better value area for me, or maybe wait for the RSI to get back to a better value and then see, you know, what happens from there. So anyway, a bit of a, um, a short video, like, you know, you can have a look, click on the uh, bit more information, you can sort of scroll down, you can see that, you know, it doesn't really have any, you know, income statement to talk about, you know, the income statement was there, you know, show the net income is quite negative. You can scroll down here, you can see that, you know, most of the technical indicators agree that it's a strong buy, um, you know, and you read a little bit about it, you know, Lithium Energy's Battery Mineral Company, blah, 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 you know, located in Argentina, Burke Graphite located in Queensland. You know, so it gives you just a little bit more information about that business. And, you know, it might be one to add to your watch list, you know, it might be something that's worth looking at. You can see that it's already gone up a little bit since we've been, uh, you know, just doing this video. So, you know, it's sort of now ranked 
I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, sort of six today in terms of, you know, the lithium stocks that have been, you know, making making a bit of a move. You know, lithium's been running quite well, you can see. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of green in our lithium stocks in Australia at the moment, you know, just because of the whole EV industry. Anyway, so that's just an easy way to use parallel lines um, to look at a trend and see whereabouts this stock's price might be within that trend. Um, and then using a couple of supporting indicators like the RSI, you know, like a horizontal support and resistance to work out if there might be a little bit more room for it to run. I uh, hope hope that was um, perhaps useful and just an easy way to draw parallel lines as opposed to having to sort of manually do different lines by yourself. Anyway, thank you for listening as always.